Praise and Worship Team Dynamics Part 3. My praise and worship leader is mean. My praise and worship leader is mean. You've never really served in a church until you've had a really mean praise and worship leader. It's very common in the churches. Very common. Especially our, it, it's more, it, see, when you got a smaller church, it's not that common. But when, when you have over a thousand, maybe 1,500, maybe a 1, thousand, when you see the thousand, you can get some mean praise and worship leaders. Um, let's talk, first of all, let's talk about the praise and worship leaders and let's show a little mercy here. Usually the praise and worship leaders are very insecure. Musicians in general are very insecure. I was very insecure. I still have some insecurities too. Um, praise and worship leaders in general are very insecure because we're defined by our gift. If we don't have our gift, we're nothing. We're defined by how good we are. We want to be in a clique. We want to be known for our gift and talents. And people praise us so much over our lifetime that if we don't have that praise and affirmation, you know, we, we're messed up. So praise and worship leaders already have a chip on their shoulders because they've been hurt. So hurt people hurt people. So they come in a situation and, and they want to be domineering and, and they've been hurt anyway. So have a little grace and mercy towards praise and worship leaders who've been hurt. Um, usually if they're mean, they've been hurt and and and, and they're trying to protect themselves. And, and a lot of times they don't know what they're doing. They, they, they don't know why they're doing what they're doing. But it lies in insecurities. And when you're insecure, you, you don't really... You, you 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 can't do anything when you're not secure in Christ. You know you you you'll you'll be mean to people. You'll be insecure. You'll think people talking behind your back, and it's a terrible situation. So I want to. So first thing I want to say to pastors is, please quit putting up these insecure praise and worship leaders in leadership over people. It's hurting people. You let somebody's gift override fruit. Obedience is better than sacrifice fruit is better than gift so what i see is that we have a lot of people with gifting that are hurting people and the pastors are afraid to put them down because they don't want to lose their money they don't want to lose the person's gift is so great that they don't want to kick him down now we we have a perfect example of somebody's gift that was amazing his name was lucifer and what did jesus what did god do you got to get out of here bro so I'm not saying kick them out, but you got to work with them. You got to let people in the prayer. This is the pastors. Please, please judge the fruit of people before you put them in leadership. The Bible says lay hands on no man suddenly lest you be a partaker in another man's sin. When that praise and worship leader is hurting people, you are partaking in his sin because you laid hands and you gave your approval to him. All right. To the praise and worship leader who is insecure, if you're listening to this, chances are you probably don't think it's you. But I'm going to give you an example to let you know if this is you. If you're always thinking people are talking about you, it's probably you. If every single week there's some kind of drama, there's some kind of issue every other week, it's you. Um... If, if uh, let's see, what, what else would be a, a situation? If you're always getting into it and you have a chip on your shoulder and you're saying people don't like me, it may be you, okay? So uh, there's always situations between the praise and worship leader. So you're serving in a church, you're a musician. The praise and worship leader is not the musician and y'all always getting into it. What should I do? What should I do if this person just is just mean? This person is just don't know how to deal with people. And I can't even believe I'm doing this video because it, we Christian, man. We're Christian. Let's love the Lord and have fun. There's nothing like having fun, praise and worship, seeing the glory of God move, man. So this is what you should do but it probably won't work, but let's pray that it does. First thing is pull him aside. The Bible says if you have an ought against your brother, go to him. If he won't hear you, bring two or three witnesses. So go to him, 
talk to him, get to know. Him. Now, when I say go to him, I don't mean confront him. I mean, let's go out to eat. Let's learn about each other. Let me understand where you come from. You understand where I come from. So maybe we can have an understanding. Okay. Now, if this person is super duper insecure, then you might have to bring an elder. The Bible has all kinds of instructions for this. Thing. So you bring another elder, you bring another elder in, and then y'all talk about this. Now, chances are bringing another elder is not going to work because the pastor who put him in place, that's my man. And I feel like I can't down my man. So I'm going to always be on his side. You know, you know what I'm saying? So I, I understand that concept. Um, let me be quite frank with you, man. I'm not doing church drama no more, bro. Like, I'm, I'm not doing that, man. I'm not talking about, uh, uh, I'm not talking about like just getting into conflicts and we we understand each other. I'm just talking about this stupid church drama, man. Like, I, I'm doing this video and I can't even believe I'm doing this video, man. This is just stupid. It's just, if we just start being Christians and we have fruit, like, that's the requirement for praise and worship, fruit. But most pastors have a requirement is paying your tithes. If you pay your tithes, you can serve in ministry. Okay? <laughs> like, that's... And if you don't pay, you got to sit down. Like, come on, man. Like, out of all of the sins and all of the laws, you pick this one arbitrary law to allow people to serve. So, praise and worship leader. You have a you have a conflict with a praise and worship leader. The first step is to go to him in private, not in front of people. Don't front him. Be Christian about it. Go to him. Sit him down. Don't just go to him in church. I want to go out with you. Uh, sometimes they'll deny it, but keep doing it. Bring them a gift. Humble yourself. Be the punk. That's what love is. You want to know what love is? Being the punk in the situation. Yep. If you feel like a punk, going to him, loving him, if you feel like the punk, you're loving. Great. That's how you know you're loving, when you feel like a punk. All right? You know, in our culture, in our African-American culture, that is the last thing you want to feel like on the list is being a punk. Yo, you got punked out, bro. Like, if somebody tell you that, you're like, ah. If you feel like the punk and you're going to him and you got your wife cooking him food and bringing food to him and you and you got and, 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 and you're asking him to go out to lunch and he's just shucking you off, dogging you, just know that God is pleased. Claps to you for loving that's what the cross is that's what the cross looks like it looks like you're getting spat on oh that sounds like jesus it looks like that people putting vinegar over your head oh that sounds like jesus it sounds like people put a crown of thorns on top of your head and you're bleeding sounds like jesus somebody's hitting you in the back disrespecting you oh that sounds like jesus welcome to the fellowship of his suffering you're doing a great job welcome to christianity bro all right Keep fighting for his affection. Keep being the light. Now, if it gets to a point that you can't take it and 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 your family, like your wife is telling you, get out of there. Like, this is a crazy situation. You know, if, if your wife, if, if your family is stressed out going to this church and it's a hassle, get out, sit down. Don't don't get stressed out and don't let your salvation and unforgiveness get you messed up because you're trying to serve at this church. Most of the time, your paycheck is connected to this, so you got to deal with it. And that's a whole nother issue. All right. So number one, love them. Love them as much as you can. If that doesn't work, step two, go to the pastor. I know the pastor is this boy and it ain't going to help, but you got to do what the Bible says. See, this is how Christianity works. I have to do my part in order for God to do his part. If you get ghetto with ghetto, if you answer evil with evil, then God says, I can't do nothing with you. But if you do your part in love, I know it's hard. I know, I know it's hard. If you do your part in love, then God will recompense you. So you go to the pastors, you go to the pastors and you say, okay, I'm, 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 I, and you have issue. You sit down, you talk and you, you try and hash it out the Christian way. If that still doesn't work, then you have to understand the stressful level and you have to ask God to give you the grace to deal with the situation. All right. And, uh, sometimes it's just, it's going to take time and you got to wait on God. 
you know, me, I'm at the point, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm at the point that if you don't have a an average amount of Christian fruit, I don't want to serve in, in a ministry like that. See, we, we've, we've, we've put people in positions with no fruit and great gift, no fruit. And what happens is they start hurting people. They start hurting people and you get church hurt. And now you got some of the biggest moves in the world away from church. People aren't going to church anymore because of this, because of this drama. All right. So I probably didn't give you a direct answer because it's going to have to come from the Holy Spirit. Um, continue to pray for these people. But if you if you are this praise and worship leader and you you got to get some help, man, you, you might have to sit down for a little bit, sacrifice your paycheck and, and get get with God and, and, and get, you know, get in his closet. Let him let him change you, you know, be open to change. Um. Let God get with you and and uh, let, let me share an experience with me. I was very I was very sensitive uh, back in when I first was playing. See, this stuff doesn't usually come out when you're playing for small churches. It really comes out when you play with uh, with big churches. And even now, I still have some insecurities because uh, you know certain things I can't do as a musician. Everybody, every musician has weaknesses, no matter what you say every musician no there's no perfect musician and the bible says and I, i'm ah oh, i forgot where it's at it's in psalms i think i don't know which psalms it says great peace the person has that love thy law and nothing shall offend him offense comes from not being connected to the source when you're, the Bible says he is your glory and the lift up your head. When your identity is in Christ, you'll never get offended. We're in the praise and worship. We're offended because our identity, our identity is not in Christ. Our identity is in our gift. And it's clear. I remember I got exposed by that, by one pastor. He said, uh, he said, oh, you got an identity crisis. He said, you got a, no, he said something about it. He called it a. A, uh, performance anxiety Performance uh, uh, Insecurity Something like that And uh, we all have it man We don't want to fall in front of our friends We don't want to We don't want to play the wrong chord Like we You know a guy sings a solo You don't even know that song You're like dang I don't Everybody, everybody has that, that little bit of You know thing in there But the reason why We usually have that Honestly, it's because we're performing for people and not the, not the Father. I remember the days when I just was a nobody, and I'm still. I mean, I mean, I, when I, I'm saying that in terms of what people say, I mean, I just was. I didn't know any chords. I was trying. Nobody was showing me anything, and I was the happiest person ever. No chord playing, happy dude. It wasn't until I got to some position. That the insecurities kicked in and, and the Lord would be like, you, you remember that scripture that says return to your first love. Remember when you was just a dude saying, if I could just play five chords, I would be happy. Lord, if you just allow me to play like blah, 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 I'll be happy. And then God gave you that. Then all of a sudden the insecurities kick in. Return to your first love. Remember, remember how you love to play when you said, man, if I could just play everything would be right I, if I could just play these chords remember those days when you just worship God and you would play that one progression that you learned forever and your family was sick of hearing that same progression over and over again remember your first love remember the father remember you and sitting down worship with him that's what God wants us to get back to all this drama in church and all this shenanigans. Can you kind of tell that I'm churched out? Can you kind of tell that the father is sick of this drama and this 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 stuff? Don't you think that makes him sick to his stomach? This this stupidness, this arguing and bickering and lack of forgiveness and drama and and passive aggressiveness. 
And, and it, don't you think God is, hates this stuff? All right, I'm going to cut this video short because short, it's going to go a while. But, um, yeah, love you guys. Part three, dealing with a hard praise and worship leader. Yep.